Welcome. I'm Gerald Heffernan. I'm the Vice President of the Historical Society. Our President is indisposed tonight. And so it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers for the Greenwood Cemetery, Don Lathrop and Reg Dearborn. Reg happens to be the historian in residence. He's the best historian in Bristol. Sorry about that. The computer decided to uh, do some updates. Good evening. Oh. And I'd like to thank the Historical Society for inviting Reg and I to come here tonight to do a little presentation on Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, I've got a couple of handouts here I'm just going to circulate. And one of these has the present. Uh, officers and directors of the Cemetery Association, the current ones, and the other one is a listing that begins back in 1901 when the Cemetery Association was first formed. There's, I think there's something like 55 names on there, and it's a little amazing to, because some years there's been as many as 12 uh, members serving at a time, so to have only 50 some odd over the 100 plus years is kind of amazing. Uh, I'm going to begin with just a brief introduction and history and then Reg is going to continue with the, with the slides. He has a PowerPoint presentation. So with that, uh, the Bristol Cemetery Association consists of a board of directors and is responsible for the operation and maintenance of Greenwood Cemetery that's located at the foot of Stony Hill. Uh, Greenwood Cemetery and St. Joseph Cemetery, the Catholic Cemetery, are the only two active cemeteries in town. The other cemeteries, which are no longer active, include uh, Meehan Cemetery, which is up on Meehan, Upper Meehan Road, Briggs Hill Cemetery, which is towards Lincoln here up on Briggs Hill, and then Barney Cemetery, which is over on the uh, Harch Gravel Road. These cemeteries are maintained by the town of Bristol. Uh, Greenwood Cemetery is believed to have started around 1800. There were a couple of cemeteries in town prior to that time, but they settled on Greenwood, this location down here, because the soils were great for, for digging. There was hardly any stone in it. It's a fine sand, and it, it holds its shape when you dig it and doesn't cave in. Uh, the first known burial in Greenwood was November 1st, uh, 1801. A young girl named Amanda Soper died on that date, and I, there was a, a Sally Soper that died six days later, which is buried there as well. I don't know if they were sisters or not. The cemetery was first known as the Village Cemetery or the Stony Hill Cemetery. It was renamed Greenwood Cemetery in 1903 by the Bristol <coughs> Cemetery Association. The association was formed under Act 246 in 1900. This was an act to incorporate the Bristol Cemetery Association. It was approved by the General Assembly on November 27, 1900 and took effect on the first Tuesday of March in 1901. The Bristol Cemetery Association is tax exempt and nonprofit. We currently have seven members on the board and we've had as many as 12. Uh, we're looking for new members to serve on the Bristol Cemetery Association. If you know if anyone's interested or if you're interested, uh, just see, see me or Reg. Uh, Larry Guile, who passed on January th or June 3rd this year, served on the board for 38 years. Larry was very instrumental in getting our database on Green, on, for, for Greenwood Cemetery on the computer and keeping it updated. Larry also served as treasurer for many years, and he will be missed. So yeah, with that, that, well, and there's, I don't know if ever saw Larry doing physical labor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was about 10 years ago. Larry and I cleaned out the old fountain down at uh, Greenwood. So, yeah. Yeah, this is Meehan Cemetery. There's a few, few monuments in there, and they're, they're very old. I don't, those must go back into the 1800s. Yeah. 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 Can you see that? I did have the ability to blow it up, but I don't right now. Barney. That's 
That's over in Barney on Hartscapple Road. Briggs Hill. Briggs Hill just had the last, basically the last ones were in 1980. That one goes back to right after 1800. <coughs> and the same with all of these. I don't know if somebody was interested in the, in the Civil War. Did I have it on the other one? But there's uh, Greenwood. We show 109 Civil War veterans in Greenwood, nine Revolutionary War, and 17 War of 1812. And Briggs Hill has two 1812, uh, four Revolutionary, and seven Civil War. I thought that was, and uh, Barney has four Civil mm -hmm. War and five 1812. I didn't find any Revolutionary War in Barney. Meehan has one Revolutionary. Soldier. Now, what about in Greenwood? Wasn't Polly a uh, revolutionary war? Uh, now he was uh, 1812, and uh, and he was revolutionary. I'm sorry. Yes, he was. I get that's a little later on. And and Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph's. This is the all the maps that make up Greenwood Cemetery and it's room 116. So the oldest section in there is this, this piece right here. That was what started in 1800. And then they moved over to here and up around to there. Uh, so section two was this section, this is section three. And then they purchased this up to here, which is sections N1 through N4. And then a later date, they purchased Section N5, and then this was purchased in the early 70s, the new yeah, it's, section. It's hard to see on that. There's like, what, there's over 5,000 in there? Larry, I was used to say that there was at least 5,700 burials, and that was probably 10 years ago, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's over 6,000. Yeah, it's yeah. 50, I think on the list is 57, 58. And every one, every, Every one of those does have a name on it. <laughs> if you look at the map, if you get, when you can yeah. read it. And I don't know where the, the names came from in the old, old section because we have no written records at all from, uh, for the old section of the cemetery in this piece right here. Nothing before 1800, so we really don't know how many people got buried in there or anything. This is a listing of all the uh, directors over the years, beginning with the, with the 10 charter members. And I just noticed uh, today that my, my father-in-law, Gordon Brown, uh, right here, came on the board in 1947 and, and served until he died in 2007. So he had 60 years on, on the board, which is a, the longest one there, I think. These are the current uh, directors. Should be, what, one more? We're missing one? No, no seven of them, yeah, that's it. Because Don's been on for 33 years. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Said he wasn't going to retire, but Brenda, go. So. <laughs> well, these are some of the. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. <laughs> these are some of the notes that I took out of our secretarial book here. This is the book that started in 1901. So all the minutes of the meetings up through the year, right up through 2008, I think, are in this book. And now Reg is keeping it in, a, in another book. But I took a few notes out of there. And you can see that first one. Uh, in 1902, uh, E.A. Hazelton uh, was given the job of clearing the apple trees down on the west boundary of the section that they just purchased for ten, sum of $10. Then they built a fence there in 1902 for 
thirty-five dollars. Uh, the cemetery got its Greenwood name in 1903. Uh, the fence we probably most of you know we replaced the fence down there in the front of the cemetery, and the the old fence was put in in 1904, so it was in there for 112 years. But at that time, it cost $707 to purchase the fence. And in 1914, as I guess when they started perpetual care, uh, charging $100 per lot for perpetual care. First Power Moore was purchased in 1921. Uh, one of Section N5, which was on the, the left up near the new section, was purchased in 37 from the Kuzno family. And there used to be a water line that came down from the top of Stony Hill down across where the gravel pit is now. But after they started the gravel pit, it left our our pipe kind of hanging in midair, so New Haven decided to purchase or give us a piece of land for to get our pipe moved from their gravel pit, and that's that happened in 1957. And then in '72, we purchased a, what we call the new section. Now that's uh, 5.44 acres over on Burpee Road. So just, just a few interesting notes that I took out of the book. These are just some of the older pictures that we have. The old, the old gate with the Greenwood Cemetery sign on it. And that was there until when? when they get knocked well, down? They been knocked down a couple times. Yeah, I figure it was about 19, or, uh, you know, late, late 19, well, just about 2000, I think, probably. Uh, Craig Brown and I went down and picked up the pieces because some truck had tried to drive through there and they were a little taller than the fence over the gate was. So, so it stayed down at Craig's shop for all that time until 2016 in pieces and uh, we decided to, to go down and get the pieces when we were selling the, uh, the old fence for salvage and came up with the idea that we ought to build, uh, put up that put the sign back up somewhere, so you'll see that later on. We have a brand new sign. Oh, there's another another shot of it. It's a little crooked then. It's been bumped <laughs> once or twice already. I think back when they put the fence in, that, that whole sign work there cost about $35 back in 1904. It's unbelievable. We came up, or Reg found the catalog online and what the prices were back then. And some of those those posts, when we pulled those posts out last year, year before, sixteen, yeah. they'd been there over a hundred years, and they were still just as straight. And they they had I don't think they moved in a hundred years. But they came out a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them came out. There was a few that the cast iron part broke off and. The, yeah. yeah, they were in the ground. We just made sure the mower wouldn't hit them. <laughs> that's another, that's that. Uh, yeah, that's as, you, as you're coming down the hill. That's the first corner. Yeah. That's, that's around 1914. Wow. Uh, this is coming from the, looking from the four corners. You can't, you can't blow it up. All of the, well, where you turn to go to Lover's Lane, where it's all open, Open pasture right over here, through, through there, all the way up through. There's not much of a, not much of a gravel pit there either. No, anything. there wasn't any gravel pit here at that time. Mm -hmm. Now that, I don't know, probably nobody. Hey, Gerald, Mike, I don't know if you remember the. There used to be a path. Yeah, it came right down across here from the top of the hill. Came in by that mausoleum right there. Yeah, yeah, it, it would come through. I think the water line was probably right close, near there. To, close to that. Yeah. There, there is a picture somewhere of the water line hanging out in the air. But yeah. They used to go down there on Sunday yeah. with their, and take their picnic lunch down there. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it was quiet. Let me get the card. Let me get the card. fountain when it was new. That fountain and the one on the park were put in at the same time. Uh, this one was a little deeper and the, and the uh, top of it was different than the one on the park. But. What is that supposed to represent, that thing on the top? Is that a flower? Or it, it looks like leaves, but I'm not sure. Do you, Don? I don't know. I, I'm not really sure, unless what it is. Does anybody know what happened to either of the top fixtures on those two fountains? The one, the one on the park, yeah, nearest, it was missing and it was around for a while, but then it got dropped. There was only, there was a few pieces of it. Left. Oh. And this one, I don't know, this was quite a while ago. I never remember this being here. No, no, I've never, uh, never seen any of that, that hardware at all. The one on the park was vandalized and was in storage at Freddie Jackman's bar near the Jackman Fuel Company. Mm -hmm. There was only a few pieces left. Yeah. They talked about mm -hmm. it last summer and I went down and I think there was a hand and something else. Yeah, that's what's left down there now. So. I was after Larry got it cleaned out. <laughs> that was a that was a a sundial that was down near the top came up missing. That's still that's still down there. That was put in in what, 17, 1917 by uh, Rose Moore Eyes. Now she owned they lived in the house on the, just north of the righty, the, the Massey oh, house. The uh, house, yes. Yeah, Massey what did he, the, the <laughs> what's the sign say in there, Gerald? You mean the name of the, yeah, the new group? I don't know. No, the, no, 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 no. Oh, the Gage Moore house? Gage Moore house, Gage thank Moore you. House. Yes. We had the sign in yeah. here, yes. This is just another picture of the west side. With all the trees along the, the west side, that break. Mm -hmm. did they take those out? We took those well, out probably on the side on the way. Now there's just a lot of poison ivy in there. We have a lot of trees in Greenwood, and, and at this point, they're just becoming a real huge liability because they're they're rotting and starting to come down, and we just don't have the money to take them down. So. We did have a branch came off a large maple down there near the old section two, two three years ago, and it took out six monuments. So oh. Not good. Is the job, is the job part still available to help with some of that? Well, yes, and I did call them the other day, and they said they were going to come over, but uh, they'd said that before. And yeah. Last year they were going to come, but never did. This is in the old section. You can see these are all uh, the slabs. And I think since this picture was taken, we probably have lost a few of those. Fences and this was a new fence put up on Burpee Road. I think that was about 2007. Act 250 required that we have a fence around the entire new section. And 20 years after that, that was uh, requested, nothing had been done, so I figured we, we were going to be in trouble. So we did the front first, so it looked like we were doing something, and then <laughs> did the side, and we didn't get in trouble anyways. How much did that cost, Don? Oh, seems like it was five or six grand for the front, and then maybe another seven for the along the hills, uh, wow. cornfield. That's expensive. You think somebody was going to get out of there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think fences were originally placed around cemeteries to keep cattle out, but you know, you don't really have that requirement anymore, but they still 
you know, this was required by Act 250, so. No dead ringers. <laughs> Let's see, is this something you came up with, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an old uh, assessment from 1926, a $2 assessment for lot care. Yeah, I think it happened to be on that lot. Every year they'd send those out. And, uh, so if you didn't want to get an assessment, then I guess you paid your $100 fee for perpetual care. Otherwise, you got an assessment every year of 2 or $3 or whatever it was that year. But the problem with that is after families pass away and no one's, no one's left, there's no one to pay the assessment. So uh, they finally kind of did away with that around 1985, I think. And now when you buy a lot, you pay the perpetual care at that time. That's, well, that's the fire monument, Dean and Solomon. Yeah, yeah S.P. Fire, he was one of the original charter members. Yeah, and uh, Lawrence, that's, yeah, the Lawrence, Lawrence monument. Yeah. I think he was the first president of the association. He's the one that donated the, the fountain both in town, I think here and, and, and in the cemetery. Well, in the cemetery, the town supposedly was done by raising subscription money, but I think most of the money came from him. Because yeah. um, he had them both put in. Yeah. That was, those are some, some of the bigger ones. This is the Robert Hawley. He was, uh, his son, uh, I'm going to cheat a minute here. Look at the name. Winter. Okay. He was he was Winter Holly's father, who was he had a store where Holly Hall is now. And when he died, his daughter gave him the land to build the town hall on. This was Robert. He was in in the Revolutionary War in the War of 1812. And his has got his has got kind of a a neat uh, epitaph on it. Uh, this guy says, who served his country in the War of the Revolution, six years, 11 months, and was for some time a sergeant commanding General Lafayette's lifeguard, was a prisoner on board the Jersey prison ship of New York and was honorably discharged. He represented this town in the General Assembly 10 years, was in the Battle of Plattsburgh in 1814, was one of the electors of this state who voted for James Monroe president and he was an acceptable member of the Baptist Church for a long, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and Gerald didn't like the spelling on some of that, but that's the way it was on this home. <laughs> said Monroe, Monroe was wrong and laughed yet, but. Hard to say. The inscriber couldn't spell. Right. And this is his son, Winter Hollies. And this one is, this is the toilet seat, as they say. <laughs> it was my own, Myron Wilson's monument, it was made from a printing press. And I stuck that one in the corner because that's what it really looked like. It doesn't, you know, it isn't really a toilet seat. They put a stone, <laughs> in, the, a stone in the middle of it. Oh, I see. Yeah. It, it, there's a stone that's engraved. Yeah. I think uh, McGee did that, Willie. That one, I think, did they paint that again? It's a different color now, isn't it? It is, I don't know. It seemed pretty rusty. Yeah, maybe it is. It. This is, this one's neat. This is A.B. Kilburn's bronze monument. It looks just like stone, but it's not. It's, what, it's mostly zinc. Yeah, it's all metal. Yeah, you got wrap on it, it's hollow. It's real ornate. And he, we found this, we got this, this is his uh, bill of sale for it. And the transportation, they brought it on the railroad. 
It cost $282.75 he paid for that stone, for that monument. That's one of the, some of the flower urns. Yeah, there's two large urns in the front of the cemetery down there, and then one up near the Dickerman Mausoleum that we need to put flowers in every year and maintain. Martha's been doing that. Yeah. I've been helping her a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think she did mention that one. <laughs> Good job, Mike. <laughs> the mausoleums. Yeah. You, got, you got three of them, right? Three mausoleums down there? Yeah. I mean, you, don't, you don't want any of those were built, right? Yep. Some what I do, yes. I found after this one, this was like the Hanks, and this was built sometime after 1933. And it, I don't have an exact date for it. This one sits to the east side up on the bank, yeah. and there's, but oh, there's two, two burials. Two burials in that. And, uh, this is the Dickerman Mausoleum, and uh, Fred Dickerman built that in 1924. Uh, oh, I can't remember now. Something that they died. He he had it built. He had it built in 1920. Uh, and that one's that one's a bigger one. That's a good size one. There's a Civil War veteran in that one. Uh, there, yes. Yeah. Uh, Dick, uh, was it Dickerman? I forget uh, the first name. Frederick. Lyman Dickerman or Charlie McGee? Oh, I have to look on the list, huh? I think it's Frederick, wasn't it? Was it Frederick? Was he in? The, he could have been in the Civil War. Oh, no, 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 Frederick is not that one. Okay. Might be Charlie McGee, Mike, I think, that Charles McGee. I have to look. I get to look at What was the connection? I don't know. <laughs> McGee built it. No, he did. I'm sorry, he did not. I don't think he built it. No. Somebody from Fort well, Wayman can tell you who built it. Uh, the Jones Brothers out of Montpelier built it. And uh, so I don't know what the connection between the McGee's and Dickerman's. But there's eight, eight burials, or room for eight burials. Room in there, there, yeah. I don't know if it's full or not. But. And then uh, this one is, this one was uh, died, this one was built right around 1906. And this one has both the Nortons, the Curtains, and the Cardells in it. And I don't, that's, that's a whole big lot. How many, how many uh, lots? I think there's uh, 24 lot, cemetery lots, and each lot can accommodate five graves. So they purchased, uh, you know, a large section of ground there that, and most of it will never be used because uh, I think most of the family is pretty much gone now. Yeah, because if you look in the corner, you don't see any stones around that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So over the years, we've done a lot of tree cutting. Uh, a lot of it's been done by Northland Job Corps from Virgins. Uh, I think my brother-in-law, Craig Brown, talked with them because he knew that, uh, you know, they trained boys out there to climb trees and cut trees and cut limbs and so on. So offered them, a, you know, a place to, to do their training, which, you know, worked out well for us and worked out well for them for about 10 years now, anyways. They cut a lot of, a lot of the cedars especially, and they did take down one large dead spruce for us. The one on the left, well, that one fell down, isn't it? Not the one that this is the, the one stone? that took out six monuments, yeah. <laughs> that was just a, one branch off that old maple. Those maples are well over 200 years old, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. And there's still three left? Oh, yeah. It, yeah, we got one that's real bad down there. This was That's Craig. Craig Brown's tree service. Uh, they were taking some down around that mausoleum. We got, I think we got everything pretty much cut around that Dickerman or the uh, Curtain mausoleum now. It, 
one came down on the mausoleum and did some severe damage there, we'd really be in trouble. Because we're responsible for maintaining that now. Those are the trees along the west side yeah. that Lathrop's came in and cut. Yeah, they did all that for, for nothing. They just came in and dropped all the trees and, and took what they could get for chips or, or logs out of those and uh, did it in two different sessions. I think there was probably uh, 30 to 40 trees down through there. Because it's a lot brighter than it was <laughs> two years ago. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more sun in there now. Well, that's out that some more than when you were working. They didn't mess around. There's a job court. Yeah, this was done, I think, in 2016 so that we could get our new fence in and not have a, a maple tree right beside the fence there to deal with. That's what the old fence looked like when we, the year we took it down. Um, and it was, I guess, you know, it's all taken down by the members. Uh, the directors all got together, went down there, and Kevin uh, Corkins kind of got us going. He had some power equipment and cutting off rivets and bolts and whatever and taking it one part, one piece at a time. We, this one, this shows how deep the the earth got around some of these and it built up probably a foot to two feet yeah. mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, so we really had to dig down to get get at some of that stuff. How long did it take you to get the whole fence down? Oh, I don't know. We worked at it for a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Probably, yeah. A little here, a little there. Yeah. yeah. Somebody get hurt and we'd have to wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all got beamed once or twice with our <laughs> <laughs> have to wait for Kevin to come back after he dropped a fence on his head. <laughs> yeah. I only lost a pair of shoes. <laughs> that shows you what the anchors look like on those uh, those poles. They were three feet deep and they were spread out like that, I think, to uh, prevent the frost from lifting them out of the ground. This is uh, yeah, those, clay down in this corner. And that cement, those cement uh, blocks where you had the rods hold. Yeah, these the rods came up in the middle of every span of fence. It's, the fence was eight foot sections and you had one of those in the middle to keep it straight. And then they poured concrete on every one of those. We did get some salvage, salvage value out of it. I think we ended up with $3,650 or something from the salvage company. So that went towards a new fence. That's the guy there coming to pick up a load. That was the last, that was the last post. That post was down there. <laughs> Uh, this was where they were drilling to put the new posts in. But that was a whole lot easier than digging the holes originally. I'm sure. <laughs> Post in there. Yeah. They did a nice job on that. This is a uh, plaque that we've had designed and, and shows all the donors that uh, donated or put in time working on the removal and, and uh, installation of or, yeah, installation of the new fence and our sign. We haven't shown that yet. No, because this was one of these, uh, Kevin's still building up. Post, well, yeah, Kevin, the old post Kevin the Corkins, yeah, he's going to make some kind of a, well, use some of the old fencing to 
make a post for placing this plaque on. I don't know just what it'll look like yet. But. This is my grandson. He uh, built this watershed for us to keep the water tank in so people can get water for their flowers. Um, we tried leaving the tank exposed outside here four or five years ago and it promptly got stolen in the fall. And it was about a 450 gallon or $450 tank and I guess somebody decided they it might make a good sap tank or something. <laughs> it disappeared one night. So we've got it inside now. This is what the, you know, so the pieces look like when we placed them all together out in my driveway with the old sign. It was missing letters and the thing had been welded two or three times before. Yeah, I think it's about five pieces there. Yeah, probably. But anyway, Kevin Corkins, or we all thought, gee, that would be a great sign to fix up and put back up somewhere. So Kevin uh, Corkins uh, volunteered to uh, put it together for us. So that worked out great. He made, yeah, he made new letters that were missing. So that's what it looks like today. We used two of the old fence posts to, for supports. And the uh, this granite around the outside was from uh, two or three sets of steps that we took out up in the northeast corner of the cemetery because they were getting dangerous and people were starting to fall. Kevin came up with the idea of putting that as a border around there and filled it with wood chips. And so we now have a sign again in Greenwood Cemetery after many years. Okay, uh, yeah, questions. Anybody that has any questions, don't hesitate to. I, I just wanted to say you guys deserve a lot of credit for all the hard work and keeping it, keeping it going. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I wanted, I think a couple of people might remember this, Brenda and maybe Sheila. Remember when Mr. Cambridge's son Mm -hmm. Yes, down the bike, I do. On his bike down the hill, and that was that first gate, wasn't it? That and he, uh, one of the things ended up in his head, I think. And mm -hmm. He uh, was not killed, but he did have an airman afterwards. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cambridge was the minister at the Federated Church at one point. The British accent. <laughs> oh. We're dating ourselves, girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of credit for. To Larry Guile for getting this all going and Donald for yeah. joining in and Reggie, thank you for helping Donald now. <laughs> well, I can't keep up with him. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of the names are very familiar. <laughs> you know, you, a lot of uh, the old yeah. times. Oh, the old, yeah, on the, yeah. on the list, yes. Yeah. So. Now, you mentioned that there was some plots left in one of those ones that you curtain, I think, and yeah. a couple of others. Yes. If the plots are left, do you have to get permission to sell them to somebody else? Or, right. or do they just remain in that person's Well, family? they were purchased by those families, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know that we can do anything with it. So that means that they're there forever. I guess that would be a legal question for somebody, but yeah. I yeah. I suppose if you ran out of space, maybe you want to let these work out. Yeah. Well, even the heirs can't. If there's some more heirs, they have to prove that there's not closer family members there first oh, wow. to use it. It's yeah, normally if somebody comes to us and maybe they want to be buried in their grandparents' lot or something, uh, we, would, we would ask that whoever the closest heirs were to the person that bought it, uh, give permission mm -hmm. uh, in writing that, that it's okay for them to be buried there because we're finding now that a lot of people are, you know, they want to get into some lot that's already available, family lot, and so you know, avoids having to purchase a, a lot for their family. 
which makes sense. Yes. Uh, how, much, well, how much is there a staff that maintain the cemetery? <laughs> well, you're looking at <laughs> <laughs> you guys do all the mowing? No, 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 no. no we, we do have, uh, we do hire a mowing contractor now. Oh. Uh, Jim Rivers, who was one of our members, did the contract for 10 years and kept his prices very reasonable, but now uh, he retired last fall, so we had to hire a new contractor and we knew the prices were going to go way up, so uh, we did go to the town and ask them for, you know, we kind of had to guess what the prices might be this year and uh, went to the town at the town meeting time and did get approved for $22,000 this last year and it turned out uh, our our uh, contract came in at 28000 or so. Uh, but we're going to make it this year. Next year might be a different story. That's uh, it's a lot of money, but it's, there, it's 18 acres down there, and mowing cemeteries is not, not easy, all the trimming and mowing. So. They probably have to carry liability insurance, I suppose. Yeah. We do have liability insurance, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Now, back years ago, uh, the cemetery, you know, they did hire high school kids or whatever to do the mowing in there and uh, and paid the salaries and everything, but that would be, you know, that's a lot of uh, hassle now to get into all that. It's just easier to hire a contractor. And, uh, well, it's, it's also four times bigger than probably was then, too. It is, yeah. big, it is bigger, yeah. Especially with the yeah, with the new section added on. And even though we have to go to the town, they it's cheaper for them because if we can't do it anymore, the town has to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, being a corporation, so, uh, well, and, and being a cemetery, uh, if we were to dissolve, then to uh, then it becomes the property of the town and. So they're going to be responsible for taking care of it and selling lots and you know everything that comes with it. So they don't want to get into that hassle either. So there is a lot to it, selling lots, uh, going down there, you know, almost on a daily basis to lay out for uh, a monument company that wants to come in and put a monument on a, on a lot. You know, I have to go down and find the corners and stake out where it's going to go. Same thing for a burial. Uh, which go, you know, I, I probably get telephone calls almost every day of the week on something. So, and it's all volunteer. So. Yeah, the Don's been cleaning, he's been fixing up the road again. And yeah, I think <coughs> a lot of, been a lot of brush. <coughs> it is look brighter. Uh, yeah, we've, Reg and I did a lot of work on the brush last fall got the trees, you know, all the hanging, the branches that were hanging down low. We, yeah, it, you know, you could go by from the road and look all the way to the back. Yeah, you can pretty much see right through everything. Yeah. Right now. yeah. And, and there's bushes that go down to trim bushes. I didn't go down to trim bushes because I think out of two bushes I trimmed, I've uncovered three stones. <laughs> you know, they're buried in there. Yeah. Somebody comes in and plants a bush, you know, 50 yeah. years ago and then they, and even Nobody though we did. have signs saying not to put in shrubbery or whatever, they seem to show up every once in a while. Don, what's the extent of vandalism? There is some, you know, I get calls occasionally, somebody may have one of these, uh, you know, these uh, sundial or sun lights or whatever, oh, yeah. uh, so solar lights, yeah. and, uh, you know, maybe somebody's broken it off or something, but. Uh, not much more than there's not a lot more driving on the grass sometimes in the spring, yeah. right? That's yeah. and I don't know if it's and I think some people have lost some things that they may have had on the grave. Or some people just it seems like they overdo it on some of the things they place on the graves today. You and know, all kinds of trinkets, and if there's a tree there, you've got all kinds of stuff hanging in the tree. And, <laughs> I was down there cutting some branches off a crab apple the other day and I got over to the dump to throw the brush in the dump and I've got a bird feeder thing <laughs> hung on the branch and well, I don't know where it came.
came from. But. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if anybody here realizes there were a couple of other burial grounds before. They called them burial grounds in years past uh, in Bristol. Apparently there was one down on Bristol Flats on the old Alec Hammond farm, which I guess uh, pretty much went away with some flood, I think, that occurred back in the early 1800s. They moved, yeah. they moved some of those. They say, we've heard stories that they've moved some of those, but as far as names, that we've I think we might have found one name. Some yeah, but we've never really found. I went through trying to find a spot where there might have been they didn't bury them together, and any names, I found some names that were buried down there, but they aren't down here, so I don't, I don't know how much, how many of them got moved. They, they may have got moved, but what they did with them, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think they marked them, because we, we can't find any that, I don't want to say don't belong there, but they aren't. Larry had looked for years. And, went through them, and the old Munsell papers have some that were buried down there, and the names don't show up anywhere else. And they could have been pushed up because there was talk that um, Fred Jackman's father helped them move. They used to have um, burials on private property, too, oh, yeah. at that time. People had their own little cemeteries. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know how many of those are left, but you, that's not under your jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> but they sometimes ask for those, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I think I've read, I think it was in the Munsell papers, that there was another one down near where Ed Mayer lives. Yeah, get well across. I think it's right under where your house is. Right there. <laughs> 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 well, it was one across from the store down there. Uh, and it, it to go up over the hill. Yeah. Which, which, which side of the road? I think it was on the right. I didn't. I just found that this spring. Oh really? Somewhere it was in the. the yeah. They I, talked I, about it in that one. They gave the name of the. the the family that it was said it was just south of some family farm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure which side of the road it was on. But I thought it was somewhere near where the mayors live. But. <laughs> well, if we see any hands coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've got much more here. Cost of graves. Uh, our current. Rates are $450 per grave, which includes uh, the perpetual care. And uh, I think we've had that same price for over 10 years. So. Number of burials per year, probably somewhere between 15 and 25. And I think we're finding that uh, full burial compared to cremations probably it's leaning towards 50 to 60 percent cremations today, and I'm sure that's just just due to economics. How many cremains in a in a grave would you allow? We're allowing uh, we allow one full burial and a cremation on top, or two cremations per per grave. Does anyone else have any questions? I just want to say thank you as a person who has grandparents and great grandparents buried there. It's really nice to see the cemetery being so well taken care of. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something to be proud of as you drive by. Mm -hmm. so thank I think you we all want to say way. thank you to the two of you also. Yes. Yeah.